Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to look at the scene where Romeo reveals to the friar of his new love. What, uh, act, what exact scene is this please, Cassie? Uh, act, two, act two, scene three. And this is played very well in the Baz Luhrmann version. So it starts off with Romeo in this extract saying, then plainly know my dear love is set. When Romeo says the word plainly, does he always speak plainly? How is Romeo speaking at the start of the play? Good, in those cliches, those Petrarchan oxymoronic love cliches. My heart's dear love is set. Notice also he talks about my heart. It's, it's like his heart is separate to him somewhat. He's like disembodying, or we call it objectifying his heart. On the fair daughter of rich Capulet. What do you notice about the ends of the lines? Rhine, combine, how, vow. Pray today. Therefore, Romeo is speaking in probably more authentic, rhyming, rhythmic, interesting love. Is this a sonnet? No, because the rhyme scheme is not appropriate. As mine on hers, so her is set of mine, and all combined, save what thou must combine by holy marriage. When and where and how we met, we wooed and made exchange of vow. What do you notice about the speed of this line here? Now then, think about in real life, you're some dude. You're talking about how you're very attracted to a woman and you're now reminiscing. What does reminisce mean? Good, you're like reliving it in your, mem in your mind. Um, about how you seduced this beautiful woman who you dearly love. Um, if the line slows down, how might the actor be acting out that line in his own recounting? Good, so again, he could slow down the open vowel sounds, the, the O's. That is again an acting form point that you can mention there. Is this about Friar Lawrence or Romeo though? Um, no, nope. oh, that part's about, about Romeo. The question itself is about, is about Friar Lawrence. So it's interesting, but maybe not so important, but it's important for us to contextualize it. I'll tell thee then as we pass, but this I pray that thou consent to marry us today. Friar Lawrence. Holy St. Francis! What a change is here! Now that's an interesting one. He, he's not really talking in that first line to Romeo, is he? Who's that first line being really directed at? Audience. Wonderful! So how, who might they have to say that to? Yeah, and he's always trying to get the audience to react to that line as well. Holy St. Francis! It's a bit like, you know, the 1960s, the 1960s Batman, although YouTube don't say that in your exams. Um, it's Rosaline, whom thou did love so dear, so soon forsaken. What kind of language is forsaken? It's quite strong. It's almost quite biblical as well, I think. Forsaken means to be abandoned, usually by someone in a spiritual sense as well. Um, young men's love then lies not truly in their hearts, but in their eyes. Now, in the Basler version, he pauses then, of course, at that point. But is there a pause in the line in the original script? No. no, okay. That's been included by Pete Postlethwaite, possibly as a kind of joke. Are you allowed to refer to certain performances in your exam? You analyze it. You could say in the Barcelona version, the friar pauses here, maybe to try to elicit a laugh from the audience. Because he's saying that young men don't think with their eyes, they think with other aspects of them, which is probably linked. Jesu Maria. And again, we have this conventional... Um, Friar saying, what deal of brine have washed thy sallow cheeks for Rosaline? What, did he, what does the Friar say that Romeo used to do? Cry. How much salt water thrown away in waste to season love that of it does not taste? What does it mean to season something? Yeah, this is true, to give it some flavour. So he says that your love was so bland and you wanted to be passionate, but now that's all been thrown away. The sun not yet sighs from heaven clears Thy old groans ring in my ancient ears. How does the friar describe himself? Oh. Not just now, what are the connotations of the word ancient? Wise. wise as well. So that's really important. How does the wise see himself? Wise. Good, wise, experienced. Is he wise and experienced? There's a tension there, so that's a key word for me. Again, he also talks about um, the sun. Romeo also described who is the son? Good. Juliet is the son. 
Lo, here upon thy cheek the stain doth sit of an old tear that is not washed off yet. Is a man really a man if he's crying with tears on his cheeks that are still there? No, there's a mocking of Romeo here. What role is the friar forcing Romeo into? The role of like a young boy who's crying his eyes. If ever thou wast thyself, these woes thine, thou and these woes war for Rosaline. Notice again the language of the friar is quite balanced. Again, it's quite poetic. Thine, Rosaline, and art thou changed? Pronounce this sentence then. Women, women may fall when there's no strength in men. Would you folks agree with that idea? Women may fall when there's no strength in men. Ella, what's your thoughts? Kind of like Yes, that's a very interesting idea there. It's also suggesting that women's frailty comes from men's frailty. How do you think a contemporary audience would react to that line? Women may fall when there's no strength in men. Somewhat maybe misogynistic. A contemporary audience might react against that, saying that actually maybe women are stronger than men. Behind every good man is a strong woman. Romeo then says, thou chidest me. Do you guys know what chidest chides mean? Oh, Chide. Tell off usually as a father to a child. So the key thing is, is how does the friar treat Romeo? Good. Puts in the role of being a child. For doting, not loving pupil mine. That's a really important difference. Doting, not loving. That's probably, I think, the friar's most important quotation, apart from another one. If you dote on someone, is it true love? What direction is it if you dote on someone? It's one direction, isn't it? He's openly saying, you doted on her, you didn't love her. But doting to be loving, it needs to be two ways. Okay. Um, Romy says, thou, um, thou badest me bury love, not in a grave, to lay one in, another one to have. So this is interesting. What did the friar tell Romeo to do about Rosaline before the start of the play? Bury love, the friar was telling him to what with Rosaline? Yeah, just to get over her, to bury this love that you have. Um, How is that interesting that he now talks about graves? How is that interesting? Go. Wonderful, there's a foreshadowing there of the of Friar Lawrence. Romeo says, I pray thee, chide not. So I pray thee, don't tell me off. She whom I love now doth grace for grace and love for love allow the other did not so. I.e., this one actually loves you back, by the way. This one actually talks to me. <laughs> oh, she knew well that thy love did read by rote and could not spell. That's an incredibly important line. What does it mean if you learn something by rote? If you do rote learning, how are you learning something? You memorize it. Are you doing it from heart? Are you doing it authentically? Friar says, the love that you did for Rosaline did read by rote. The Petrarchan lover would be a lover based on that Petrarchan expectation. You would read how you're meant to love, you read that love's meant to be confusing, and then you do all this kind of love. Does that exist in the contemporary world? Do you guys read about how you're meant to love from pop songs and then you kind of act it out a little bit in your own eyes and your own faces and your own minds? And could not spell. But come, young waverer, come, go with me. In one respect, I'll your assistant be. Now, in one respect, now this is interesting. What is the only one respect that he agrees to marry both of them? Yes, for this alliance may so happy prove to turn your household's rancor to pure love. Now, bear in mind, the actual pronunciation of these um, words will be different. It might be more like prove and louvre. Um, in Shakespearean times, so that would be a closer rhyme. But notice that the final one, we have that rhyming couplet, the RC, the rhyming couplet. If we end with the rhyming couplet, it suggests that it's like a perfect idea. I want to be I, happy with the idea. So the friar, why does he agree to marry Romeo even though he's just expressed doubts? Good, to try to see how this love might solve wider conflicts. Because the friar's got wider social, spiritual, cultural responsibility as well. Is the friar being selfish, do you think? Yes. Yeah. Do you think he's being naive? Yeah. 
is he kind of overwhelming his own good judgment in this di- in this desire to try and have some social good from that? Yeah. Do you blame him though? No. That's an interesting idea. Okay, folks. What are now three points about how the friar is elsewhere in the play that you think link that might link to here? What are three points from elsewhere in the play? Okay, folks. Now I want you to write an actual sweaty paragraph. I want you to either in- entirely in, um, place it within this extract, or more ideally, place it in the extract, analyze some form choices or some language, and then expand it in the same paragraph to elsewhere, maybe when the friar tells Romeo and Juliet in Act 2, Scene 6, to love moderately. And you can look at maybe this, rep- uh, this repeated imagery of water and salt. What are the languages of salt? Preservation, maybe. This idea of seasoning and passioning as well. And look at this role of the friar and how the friar talks to Romeo about passion. Okay? How does the friar respond to Romeo's passion? How does, um, what does the friar think about young men and passion? Okay? Folks, so 